Hello one and all, and welcome to episode 5 of The Shadow of Eindhoven with me, through Ball FM. I'm starting on the finances screen today because I've just asked for some more wage budget and uh, they give us uh, 6 grand, so I'm pleased with that. Yeah, but as you can see, we've got 1,300,000 in the bank. We're doing really well financially. You know, I think the TV revenue every month that comes in in the, in the Airster Divisie is very, very handy. But um, I will show you the games that we played after our cup defeat to um, our city rivals, PSV Eindhoven, now. So we're back in league action against Top Oss, which is a top name for a football team. It absolutely is. There's some great names knocking about in Dutch football. Um, top Oss is one of them. Um, but uh, unfortunately, they, as I mentioned in the, the end of the last episode, um, Top Oss are actually bottom of the table, or they were at the time, I'm not sure if they still are, um, but they uh, beat us 2-1. Um, it was a very, very even game. You see by the shots at the bottom there that they, they had 18 to 13 and 6 each on target is probably the main stat there. But Florian Bach played a really good game and uh, and got us uh, an equaliser in the 37th minute to cancel out Robert Mutter's opener. But uh, Philip, Philip Romans scored in the 44th minute and that's how it stayed until the end of the game where we were beaten 2-1 unfortunately. But uh, the, the stats flatter top us a little bit. We absolutely went for it in the, in the last sort of um, 10 minutes and the only thing that... Um, that seemed to happen was that it allowed them to have more shots, um, if anything. So it didn't really work, and we ran out 2-1 losers in the end. We played a really entertaining game against Telstar 1963. At the time, uh, Telstar were fourth in the league, so these were uh, obviously a very, very good side. We dominated the ball against them. Um, we had 16 shots to their 18, uh, 8 apiece on target again. So a lot of our games are very, very even, and they do tend to swing either way because of um, I think it's obviously because of uh, the, the, the quality that we've got we can't put teams away we end up uh, conceding stupid goals but as you can see there Alvin Daniels played an absolute stormer um, two key um, chances created five key passes and an assist uh, to boot so uh, Jeffrey Ashiampong put us ahead on 10 minutes before Karim Tafi uh, had a really good game he equalised in the 46 before Daphne put us ahead again and then Tafi picked us back once more before Daphne finally in the 91st minute scored with a back post header and uh, that put the game to bed. Um, really good performance from us really. Um, things started to pick up um, towards this game and I, and I sort of started to think, huh, oh, could, uh, could we start to climb the table here? I played the game against Hellman Sport totally forgetting uh, that they're our local rivals and that we actually compete in the East Brabant derby with them. But um, I got carried away and started playing a lot of games behind the scenes. Uh, but I'm really enjoying this save, actually. But we ran out 2-1 winners against our local rivals. We had a full house, packed stadium. I think it was 4,200 at the Jan Louvers, uh, which was really, really nice. Um, obviously, it got us a little bit of bank as well uh, in there, which is always nice. Um, but uh, we took the lead through Alessio Carlone uh, on the 25th minute before Stephen Edwards pegged us back. And again, it was another really, really even game before uh, we got a penalty in the 86th minute and Roshdi Ashentay was able to keep his cool and slot the penalty home in the 86th minute under probably immense pressure. Once again, Florian Bach, player of the match, had an absolutely excellent game. Um, I just really hope we can try and sign him in the, uh, in the summer because he's been absolutely fantastic for us. And once again, a really frustrating result against FC Dordrecht. Again, they were bottom of the league at the time um, that we played them, and we lost it to a stupid, stupid own goal, which I will show you now, because it is extremely frustrating, considering the match stats. 11 shots, 4 on target, to their 3 and 1. They had one shot on target and somehow managed to win the game. The little commentary thing at the bottom of the, um, the screen actually said, uh, FC Eindhoven won't know how they've lost this one, and actually... No, no, I, I have no idea how we managed to lose this, um, other than the fact that we just didn't create enough and Dave and it was absolutely awful on the night. But I will show you that own goal because it was infuriating. So it was actually, it actually started with our attack and uh, Augustine Loaf passed to Rosema. He lost the ball and uh, Heydari came forward with it. Um, we tried to put a tackle in. It, we got a decent tackle in, but Milatic was still able to continue the attack. Stankov passed it to Smith. Smith inside for Morgos. Stankov... Kind of Ashen Tail was way too narrow again, but what what the hell was that? What what was that? Should we just analyse that in a little bit more detail, shall we? So Stankov's got it on this side, plays it in, it comes off Ashen Tail, and at this point you're thinking somebody just clear the ball, somebody just clear it from here. It rolls on, and Loaf, you know, who should probably he's got time probably to take a touch there and you know turn around and just kick it out for a throw in, you know, put it into touch. But what does he do? He fires it right against um, our keeper Svinkles. 
it hits Fro Florian Bach and uh, goes into the back of the net. So, and then I was fairly frustrated with this game as well, to be honest. I felt we were poor in the game. We only really started to pick up when I actually changed the formation and went to uh, two strikers up top because things weren't just, just weren't working. They had Robert Schilder sent off in the first minute for a professional foul. Dafner was going through and um, Robert Schilder, um, he was clean through on goal. Robert Schilder just pulled him down. Um, and it was a um, it was a, a, a straight clear sending off first minute, and they actually took the took the lead on the on the sixty fifth minute. My cat is me out of the window, so I'll come back to this in a second when I've let him in. Yeah, so overall, really frustrating game against uh, Kambua. Um, with that Robert Schiller sending off, I thought we could capitalise. Um, we weren't able to do anything in the game. They still dominated the ball. They started with a four three three system, um, and changed to two strikers, three midfielders. You know, four three two once uh, Schiller had been sent off, but. Um, we just weren't able to do anything and I changed to two strikers and that's when most of our shots and shots on target kind of uh, came about really um, and Alvin Daniels fortunately for us was able to um, to, to put away an equaliser in the 89th minute um, with a nice fin close range finish but um, unfortunately yeah, that is a Callon goal which again they didn't really deserve um, to be honest he was just he got it sort of on the edge of the box turned on his left foot and bent one into the top corner from, from range Nothing we could do about it, really. But 1-1 was the result in the end. I feel we could have capitalised on that more. So that then leaves the KKD, as I'm now going to call it. I need to be careful with that, don't I? I'm now going to call it the KKD because it's uh, it's much easier than calling it the Koiken Campion Divisier every time. So um, this is how it looks. And we're currently in 15th place, so we're probably in um, the highest position that we've been all season. Um, we, we were on a decent run of form. November, if you take a look at our schedule, November has actually been a really good month. If you look, we've got two draws. Uh, sorry, a draw, two wins and two losses. That's sort of, again, that sort of like mid-table form. Um, you know, maybe even sort of looking to upper reaches if you, you know, we've got two home games coming up as well. Um, and I finally worked out what the periods mean. So um, if we look on the league table and go on overall, no, this one, yes, periods, first period. So you can see Almira City won the first period and so... Um, it meant that they have secured themselves a playoff place regardless of where they finish in the league, which is quite good really because that means that we could actually get a playoff place if we manage to win uh, one of the periods. And um, I would imagine that in this period, we're not doing too badly. Um, second period, we're actually 10th in the second period, so um, and only three points off the top, which is uh, FC Volendam. So um, we could actually, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that we will, but our goal difference is zero. We've got seven points in this in this period. But um, we could actually, we've got four games to play in it, two of them at, at home. You know, I just think we could finish really high up, if not try and push for that playoff place. If we if we got that playoff place from being in um, in the position that we're in, I would, that would just be crazy. But it, it's kind of cool. I kind of like it. I kind of like that rule, to be honest. It's pretty good. But yeah, Almeida City is still top of the league and they will gain automatic promotion if they continue the way that they're going. Did not expect them to at the start of the season to be as, as high up as they are. Um, I expected Young, Young Ajax and Young PSV who are actually down in 14th um, to, to be running away with the league and Sparta Rotterdam as well um, have actually just sacked the manager So because they're down in 13th. So our rivals Helm and Sport up there in 12th, their uh, lofty height at 12th. We'll see if we can catch them this season. We are eight points behind them, so it's look, not looking very likely, but we'll give it a go. So today we're going to play against Jong Utrecht, who sit in 16th position in the league, uh, one position below us, so it's a really winnable game. And that's kind of the reason why I wanted to come back for this, to see if we could get a win on camera, because I'm not sure. I don't think that we've had one, apart from, obviously, the, the NEC game, uh, the NAC game in uh, in the in the KNVB Alison Becker, as I've it's now taken to calling it. Um, but yeah, um we need, we need a win. We need a league win on camera. And uh, it was interesting, actually, we hadn't won a home game in the league um, until we won those two games against Telstar and, and, and Helmand Sport. So that was pleasing as well. But let's pick the team for this game anyway. I'll show you the team in a second. So it's looking like it's going to be a pretty standard team for this one against Young Utrecht. We've got Spinkles in goal, as per usual. We've got uh, Augustin Loaf with Ashi Ampong and Florian back as the centre-backs. Roshdi Ashente in left back, and we've got a bit of a central midfield crisis at present. So Sieber van der Heiden is going to have to play as the deep line playmaker. Massimo Ornatelli picked up um, an awful injury. He's got a torn thigh muscle, and uh, he's already been out for four weeks, and he'll still be out for another six weeks to two months. So not great for Ornatelli. Uh, Sander Rosen was suspended, so he can't play. Sami Burad and Jay Idzis have both got injuries as well. So that leaves us very short on that front. Um, I actually wonder. 
if there's anybody more suited to the deep line playmaker role in the reserves or in the under 19s that I would rather play than Van der Heiden because he's he's probably more a um a defensive midfielder rather than a deep line playmaker. So I'll have a look at that now. But Kaido Roy, who again has got some very nice stats there actually. He's got 15 first touch, 13 passing. Uh, his position and lets him down a little bit as a deep line playmaker and composure. But um, he's, all of his other stats are pretty good. I think I'm actually going to play Kai De Roy in this game. So the midfield now looks like this. It's Karim Esikal in defensive midfield with Kai De Roy and Chani Akangamene as the box-to-box -box midfielder. Alvin Daniels as the right winger. Elton Kabangu is going to start on the left. I'm not convinced by either of Kabangu or Carloni this season, unfortunately, with um, the the excellent Christoph Dafner up front. Um, and uh, let's get into the game and see if we can beat Jong Utrecht. So Jong Utrecht go with a classic 4-2-3-1 formation. It's a classic football manager formation. They've got Santiago, Tommy Santiago, which is a very, very cool name. I quite like that name. Um, it's one degree centigrade. It's very chilly out there. Um, I think we can turn these over in all honesty. I think we're going to start with a balanced approach, which I didn't mention before. Um, but I think we can turn these over. I think we, we should be looking to win this game. I've given them all some faith. The, the team talks tend to go the same way, don't they? Let's get into the game. And we are on the 2D again, as uh, as if you missed in the last video. I've now changed back to the 2D classic. It is exactly what I want. It's uh, it's really nice. He's De Roy. His first involvement is almost sprayed a perfect pass there for, for Daniels. We're going to get the lead table on there instead of the match that's duplicated. And 15 minutes in and we're still there's still nothing really happening. Um, Young Utrecht are having a lot of the ball. Um, we're having the shots. They haven't actually had a shot uh, in anger in this game as we they've had now had the first shot. But Alvin Daniels over a free kick. Hits it. Oh, he's hit the bar. And I can't get there. Ashi Ampong now will pick it up. It's Jeffrey Ashi Ampong. Gives it back to Rosh Ro Ashton the, the highlight fades away. But uh, that was the first real uh, incident of note in this game as as uh, Alvin Daniels hit the crossbar with that free kick. And it looks like the time's going to tick away until half-time. Pretty boring first half. There's not been a shot on target. There's been one yellow card, if, if quite a few fouls. It looks like the game's been broken up quite a lot. But it, we do go in at half-time. Tommy Santiago's been, been, uh, been booked, despite his great name. Not happy with your performance. Everybody's motivated. Let's do this. Might as well stay with me for the first uh, highlight, because there might not be another one with the state of this game, to be honest. Um, it's not been a very entertaining game, has it? Let's be let's be quite honest. Um, we have got a highlight after 51 minutes, though, and uh, it, it uh, starts with um, FC Eindhoven in possession. Swinkles comes out of the box with the ball, which is frightening. Here's Swinkles. He plays a, a, a pretty poor ball to, right to their player, to be honest, right to Peter Lim on that right-hand side. Velanas, Maknak, Malahi, Van Royen, Velanas... Van der Meer, Malahi's through, Malahi, great save, but Van Royen puts in the rebound. We're 1-0 down to Young Utrecht at home, and I think, again, we may need to kind of change things up. We haven't had a shot on target um, in this second half, but uh, Van der Meer there, uh, Malahi just took it around our defender. Good save from Swinkles, but Van Royen, unfortunately, was there to uh, to poke in the rebound. 1-0 Young Utrecht, going to demand more, going to demand more because it's not good enough. We haven't had a shot on target. I'm going to go attacking. Uh, Ashante with a long throw. Something I've not seen too often from us. Ashante, Daniels. Alvin Daniels curls one wide of the post. I'm going to make a couple of quick substitutions. Daniels is having a really poor game on a 6.1. We're going to bring on Marcelo Lopez for him. Cabangu can also come off for Carlone, who has been playing in his place. Um, and we'll get back into this and see if those changes can make a difference. Ashanti again with another long throw. He does throw it towards Carlone. Kai De Roy on the edge of the box. Kangamene hits one and it's saved by Pace as Marcelo Lopez picks it up again. But uh, it was a good effort from a Kangamene on the edge of the box. But unfortunately, we just weren't able to uh, capitalise on the rebound like they, were, they did to us. But the highlight looks to be still playing on as uh, De Roy plays a nice ball around the corner for a Kangamene. Marcelo Lopez on the right hand side. It's cut out by Brinkman, and now can Utrecht bring it forward? Van Royen plays it round the corner. I don't know what Ashi Ampong's doing there. He sort of... My word. My word, what was that all about? 71 minutes gone. I think we need to change something um, within the tactic um, just to try and get us playing a bit more um, and a bit more in their sort of areas. It's very difficult when you've got so many injuries in midfield. Um, 
you know, the likes of De Roy and Ikangamene, they're not really, um, you know, set up for this level. De Roy, not, not yet anyway, maybe in the future, but um, so far we're playing for set pieces. I think we'll take that off. Um, you know, we don't really want, want to be doing that. We are overlapping on the left um, with Rosh Diash and Tevi because he's got good, slightly more direct passing. Um, no, I think it needs to be more direct at this stage of the game. Um, I think we'll just take that off so we're not actually... We will get both the overlaps going and we might bring... I don't know, Loaf's not the best going forward um, on that right-hand side. Um, I think... Oh, I just really don't know what to do. Um, we're currently distributing it to the centre-backs and full-backs. We haven't got much height up front. Davin is not bad in the air, but he's not the tallest. Um, I'm just unsure as to what to do. Um, here, really... Um, we're going to be more expressive and we're going to run at the defence because we've got good dribblers on either side in Carloni and Lopez so I think that might be a way forward um, mix crosses do we want to start hitting them low we'll try and whip them um, we'll try and whip them and just see what happens we'll get back into the game and see if those changes make any kind of difference um, as we do have a highlight after 77 minutes as their goalkeeper kicks it up the field um, Ikangamene has lost it in the middle of the park which has been a feature of this game Van der Velden, Van der Meer Van der Velden again Velanas Van der Velden playing it nicely between it Loaf, that's a really poor header he's just giving it straight back to them he seemed to have time there Velanas, Maknak, Malahi Van Royen what a goal that is from Mitchell Van Royen nothing we can do about that that's the kind of thing I mean Loaf's header led to that led to that whole goal um, he should have done better with that header, but those are types of goals that we've been have been scored past us. Malahi just comes in, Van Royen. I mean, that's miles out, and he's just absolutely blasted it into the top corner. It's just sometimes you've got to hold your hands up and say that that goal was just too good, haven't you? You know, you can Carloni with a free kick. That's not troubling the goalkeeper, is it? But yeah, sometimes you just can't avoid things like that. Um, and Young Utrecht have, have been the more clinical. And again, it's our lack of quality, I think, um, that's let us down. 95 minutes have gone with there's only supposed to be four added um, as De Roy in the centre of midfield. Didn't pull up any trees, did he, Kai De Roy, unfortunately. But we had we were very limited in our options. Um, we had a pool game. Chani and Kang Kangamene is not a box-to-box -box midfielder. Um, we're just really, really short on, on midfielders at the minute. Um, and we just need to make sure that that you know it doesn't keep on affecting us. But Mitchell Van Royen had an absolute um, storm, and didn't he? he that, that second goal was just incredible. I'm going to say that wasn't good enough because it absolutely wasn't. I mean, two 0 against a team that were below us in the league, we're now down back down to to 17th there. Um, if we take a look at the table in full, we're now back down to 17th, and Young is had actually have a game a game in hand. So if they win their game in hand. We could actually be as low as as low as eighteenth after that defeat. So, um, I mean, I think scoring goals has obviously been been an issue for us this season, and it'll it will continue to be um, until we can strengthen the squad because we just haven't got the players to 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 challenge. I don't feel at the minute. Um, you know, hopefully, what I'm hoping for this season is to obviously continue to uh, to consolidate and to strengthen the squad in January, and then strengthen in the summer again, and hopefully, hopefully, we can mount something of a playoff challenge next season maybe have one of the good periods, you know, have a good nine games, get ourselves into playoff contention and look to get into the to the area divisi. But um yeah, I don't see that happen and probably this season or next, I think it's maybe going to be a couple of seasons of consolidation before we can look to get promotion. So that brings us to the end of the episode and that is now three wins without a win in the league. Again, we're going to go through periods like this. Um we have been going through periods like this and it's going to continue until we really can figure something out. But um RKC Valvik is our next game. Uh, we'll play some games behind the scenes. Obviously, I forgot that in Holland, um, there is a winter break as well, so we've got three friendlies there um, playing Colin in there, which is quite nice. We should get some decent gate receipts from that. And we're playing Excelsior M once again. And that's all before we return for NEC. So I think what I will do, the natural course of things, is to come back for after the winter break um, and uh, catch you up on any transfers and sort of what's happened in the games between any injury news, things like that. Um, but that just brings us to the end of the episode I hope you've enjoyed it I know I'm, I am enjoying this save despite our plight um, but yeah if you could drop a like uh, comment or subscribe if you're new um, I would much appreciate that but thanks everyone for watching now bye bye